Hello everyone, Emery here and welcome to another Billings Farm at Home video. Today for Time Travel Tuesday, we're going back to a Fanny Farmer recipe and celebrating Earth Day. So we're being able to use the whole of something. So we're gonna make stuffed peppers today. We have lots of ingredients that came out of our garden from last year that we've preserved and kept over the winter. And then I'm gonna show you what we do with the fresher ingredients and how you can incorporate those into a recipe for the future. Um, so let me walk you through the ingredients that I've prepared today. You can find the recipe on our website. But here is our three quarters of a cup of cooked rice, um, some salt, pepper, just for a little flavor, I added some garlic as well. We have tomatoes that we preserved over the winter time, like I said, from our garden. We have some diced chopped chicken. You can use ground beef or pork or whatever protein you would like. The recipe calls for onion juice, but I just grated a whole onion that we also grew in our garden last year. We're gonna melt a tablespoon of butter. And then here are our prepared peppers. So before we get to this stage, I'm gonna show you what to do with the pepper here. Um, so basically for stuffed peppers, you wanna cut off the top and then seed it out. So it's a nice slice right off the top. And you can see you have the center here and it's really easy. Lit off our compost. So you're just gonna stick your fingers around the edges, give it a little twist and the center pops right out. So we're gonna dump the rest of the seeds out. And you see on the inside how there's a little white pith part. We're just gonna pinch that off with our fingers and also throw it in to our compost bin. Now we give our compost to the chickens that live here. Um, so you get nice fresh eggs out of the deal. So it really all comes full circle. And for the top part that you cut off, um, we'll dice this up and then be able to use it for a future recipe. And to finish preparing the pepper, we're gonna parboil this. So put it in a little salted boiling water and set your timer for eight minutes. That gives the pepper a pre-cook uh, before we stuff it with all of our ingredients. Um, so yeah, here we go. So our peppers have finished parboiling. I put them all into our baking dish together. The rest of the recipe is extremely simple. We're gonna combine all of the ingredients that we have and fold it into our cooked rice. So I melted my butter, add that in first, make sure we get it all in. I have the chicken, I'll dump that right in. The chicken came leftover from another meal, so this was just a really great way to use up what I had in the fridge. We have our onion, again, the recipe calls for onion juice, but I grated the onion for a little extra flavor. Our tomatoes, all the good juices. It's basically just tomatoes, not a lot of the, the liquid that comes with it. And then a couple of pinches of salt, pepper, and garlic. Just nice spread around. And then we're gonna give this a fold all together, really get it mixed well and incorporated. Even before the oven, it smells delicious. And once it's fully mixed, all that's left to do is to scoop the filling into our peppers and then bake that in the oven at 325 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. Here goes the last scoop of our delicious filling into the pepper. And to get it ready for the oven, we have one and a half cups of chicken stock. You can use water and we're just gonna pour it in to the peppers and that just keeps everything nice and moist so all of our stuffed peppers don't dry out in the oven. And stock adds just that extra little bitter flavor as opposed to water. So into the oven they go and when they come out, we'll have nice delicious dinner for this evening. Dinner just came out of the oven, it smells incredible. I baked the stuffed peppers for probably closer to 40 minutes just to be sure everything got nice and warm through. As a finisher, you can have it just as it is or feel free to shred some Billings Farm cheddar cheese on top. Uh, the pepper should be warm enough to melt it, but if not, sticking it under the broiler for a couple of minutes will get the cheese nice and melty and crispy. If you have any question about this recipe or video, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and we will see you back next week for Time Travel Tuesday.